All right, welcome everybody to eighth grade curriculum night. Um, I'm Jordan Bellhorn and I am your student's eighth grade social studies teacher. So welcome. So a little bit about me. Um, I am originally from Michigan, um, a small town called Traverse City in the pinky part of the state. Um, very beautiful, really like the outdoors there. Um, and I moved out to Seattle about three years ago. Um, and I'm really liking my time out here. It's been wonderful. Um, and I graduated from Grand Valley State University with a bachelor's degree in secondary education and group social studies, and I actually minored in French, so I am certified to teach social studies as well as French. Um, so here are some of the topics that we are going to be covering this year in eighth grade social studies. Um, we start off the year really focusing and developing um, our historical thinking skills, and then we start to apply those across different historical content units. Um, but I just want you to know that our focus this year will be teaching um, different perspectives of history and trying er, and really tying in different current events. Um, I hope that your students leave understanding. Um, multiple lenses in which we view history, um, not just one um, common lens that um, when we talk about U.S. history, we are learning about those different perspectives on the events that took place in our country. Um, so you can see the list there. Um, it does go in order of the year. Um, and so we start with colonial development and by the end of the year really thinking about reconstruction after the Civil War and how that impacted politics and created cultural changes um, that still have lasting impacts on our society today. So why we work. Um, at the end of the day, I just want your kids to leave my room better citizens um, and better people. So they will be able to apply their knowledge of U.S. history and have a deeper understanding of these issues that will come up when they are voting. Um, they will have an awareness of issues regarding justice, equity, and access and how that changes over time in U.S. history. They will also have better empathy towards others by interacting with their peers and examining pretty tough and challenging historical events, learning through those different perspectives on history. So how we work. In U.S. history, we work both in groups and in individually, um, but students will work in groups to analyze different documents, create visuals that demonstrate their comprehension, develop and support claims, using evidence to support those claims, They'll share their ideas, develop active listening skills, and hopefully ask higher level questions and be curious about what they're learning. In U.S. history, we also work individually, so students will need to work on their reading and writing skills. It's not just memorizing dates and events, but applying what they know into um, writing and using reading analysis um, to help them. Um, students will also be wrestling with pretty complicated topics. Um, and that just requires processing time. They may come to you and have these tough questions and conversations. So be ready for that and be ready to have those conversations. Um, as for class policies, thinking about homework, my aim is to limit the amount of homework to a reasonable measure. Um, I do provide time in class to begin larger assignments. Um, so typically your students should not come home and say, I have so, so much social studies homework. Um, we try to limit it to have short 15 to 20 minute activities to complete outside of class throughout the week. Um, but this year with Gator Time, I think that would be a great place to um, push your student to use um, that 25 minutes at the end of the day to get caught up on homework set a checklist, um, set reminders on their phone to stay organized. Um, for late work and redos, I do accept late work until the end of a particular unit, typically two to three weeks, um, or unless a new practice opportunity is offered. Um, with standards-based grading, which I'll talk about um, in a little bit, um, students are practicing a lot, so I don't want them necessarily to get hung up on old material. When there's new opportunities for them to show their learning um, in future units and future assignments. So um, I will mark something missing in Skyward if I think it's important for students to go back and complete. 
um, students are able to redo and retake assessments um, and assignments, but that is student initiated. They can come and touch base with me on the game plan, how they should um, get better at a certain skill um, that they were working on. Um, so my last point with standards-based grading, I do take the most up-to-date knowledge. So if your student can show their understanding, their mastery of a skill past a due date, I will always accept that. And Skyward will be updating frequently to show that fresh learning and um, show that most recent understanding and mastery of skills. So like I said, um, I would talk about the grading system. So I am one of the many teachers at IMS utilizing standards-based grading. Um, and this is a new system where we include our state standards. And as a US history content team at IMS, we are determining what we want our eighth graders to achieve by the end of the year. So we use a one through four scale to show them where they are in terms of mastery of a skill. Um, and so I want you to know that you really should expect your kids to start at a lower level and then work their way up. They're learning all of these new skills, all this new content, and we have to build on that throughout the year. And that involves a lot of practice, a lot of failing, a lot of making mistakes, but then reflecting and getting better at that. So for more information on this, please watch the video entitled G for E. Um, in the curriculum night videos so you can get a little bit better understanding of what this looks like. Um, so what can you do to help your students succeed in social studies? Um, one, I ask that you just check in with your student each night what homework they were assigned. Um, I think just having them reflect again, okay, yes, Ms. Bellhorn told me that we had to finish up the notes so then they can have that quick reminder and go back and do that. To um, help your student learn to use either a paper calendar or electronic calendar, um, we have talked about organizing um, their things that they need to do, but um, you can show them, maybe you'd like to use a checklist or a calendar yourself, and then they can um, see that being modeled at home. Um, three, help your student remember to charge their iPad every night. We will be using um, lots of technology still. Um, it does have it, its advantages, um, but disadvantages when the iPad is not charged and students can't participate. So um, I do have some chargers available in my room, but it would be helpful if they make sure that their iPad is charged at night and ready to go for the, the day, next day of school. Um, four, watch the news with your students and discuss current events. Um, Part of our curriculum is tying in those current events, having students make connections from past to present. So the more you watch and the more you discuss, the better students are going to get at that. And five, please encourage your student to advocate when in need of help. Um, I am always here as a resource. I am here to help your kids with whatever questions they have and also for you as well. So if you're struggling, don't know what your kids should be working on, then um, you can always feel free to reach out to me. Sorry, that's my phone. Okay, so in Skyward, grades should be updated weekly, if not daily. So as I mentioned before, grades are um, updated pretty frequently because students are showing their progress daily. Um, with the amount of practice that they're doing, um, I want to reflect that in Skyward. So um, grades that you might see now, currently early in the trimester, those are going to shift and change um, many times through the end of the trimester. Um, also, if an assignment is marked missing, it means that the student can still turn the assignment in. Um, so please make note of those missing assignments. That's what I deem that students should go back and get that practice in or need to make up an assessment or things like that. Um, be aware that you're going to see a lot of no count grades and this really allows me to communicate your student's progress on a skill um, or the grade level standard without always counting their practice. Um, so just know that's kind of like a trail to show evidence for how your student's doing, um, getting to that progress view, those counted grades in Skyward. Okay, so quick tour of Schoology. If I go in, you will see on your student's um, 
Schoology page. It might look a little bit different on the app, but your students will have a weekly folder where they can access all of the material. And it's broken up by day, so if your student is gone, um, perhaps on Wednesday, they can always go back and check, look at our daily slides, and see what resources we were working with that day. Um, so if they come to you, not sure what to do, hopefully that will be helpful um, and you can help guide them through that. Um, also, students have access to past weeks so they can see everything we've done in the trimester and always go back and review that material. So contacting me, email is the best way to contact me. Um, I will typically respond within 48 hours, often faster, but not always guaranteed. Um, and also, typically, I will not respond to students past 7 p.m., but I am available to them um, and will answer their questions. Um, it might just be the next morning before school. Um, so let's go to our last page here. So um, questions, comments, concerns. I would love to hear from you, um, whether that's a short introduction, whether it's a question or a follow-up concern that you would like to share with me. Um, but you can scan on your personal device this QR code here, and this will take you to Flipgrid. It's a fun video app that we like to use with your kids, and um, that's where you can record and send me a little message. Um, these videos will be private, so it's just one-on-one -on -one with me. Um, and if you need a little help on how to use this, reach out to your kids because they have used it already um, and can kind of teach you all the ways and how to use Flipgrid. So you can scan that. I just want to end on thanking all of you for what you do. Um, it is a team effort, and I really appreciate your support for your kids, for us at IMS. Um, and I just really, really appreciate us coming together for the success of all of our students. So thank you, and I hope that you have a lovely rest of your evening.